And now for the latest news on the markets, it's over to Steve Letts. Steve. Thanks, Alan. Well, Wall Street's recent bullish sentiment continued through to the end of the week, with all the key indices up around 1.5% on Friday. The S&P 500 pushed through 1,200 points for the first time since early August, capping the strongest two-week run in more than two years. Across the road, the Occupy Wall Street protesters also had a pretty feisty rally themselves, fighting off attempts to raise their month-long siege of a financial district park. We're peaceful. The sound and fury didn't obscure the fact that the current profit reporting season is going quite smoothly. Forecasts of a 12% rise in overall earnings look like being revised up, with so far 70% of company results beating expectations. Waiting in the wings, though, several big banks are due to report next week. And so far, results from the likes of JP Morgan have been disappointing. However, the fate of the rally still largely depends on the dubious proposition of Europe getting its financial house in order. But for the time being, the appetite for risk has returned. Over the week, the US was up 6%, while Europe and the UK also enjoyed healthy gains. The ASX was the laggard, which to some extent was weighed down by a stronger Australian dollar. With more on the local market, here's Marcus Padley. Well, the Greece is not going to default this month rally, has seen the market up 10.8% in less than two weeks, uh, although it did peak a little bit on Thursday with some rather weaker than expected Chinese trade numbers. Uh, one of the sectors doing quite well this week was the banks. They're running into results and dividends. The National Bank has results on the 27th, the ANZ and Westpac early in November, and the CBA has trading update as well. Another sector doing quite well was the resources sector. Any company with third quarter production numbers seems to have gone up, uh, including Rio, Iluca, Oz Minerals, Panost and Kagara. Not so lucky in resources this week was Illumina, which saw their share price down after their joint venture partner in the US, Alcoa, kicked off the US results season with a rather poor set of results. We also saw Bank of Queensland results this week, profit down 14%, bad debts up 92%, but the market didn't seem to mind. Uh, JB Hi-Fi was up on their AGM. Uh, they told us trading conditions are challenging, but we're reasonably optimistic running into Christmas. And there are some hopes this week that we're going to see an interest rate cut on Cup Day, uh, which would help the whole retail sector. Uh, the reject shop hat was up on the back of their AGM as well. Tabcorp had a uh, trading update and they were up. ERA went into a trading halt on Tuesday, uh, pending a $500 million capital raising at a huge 53% discount of the current share price. Their major shareholder, Rio, is going to support it, but it will be interesting to see what their share price comes back on at. Uh, Qantas was up despite uh, strikes this week. Extract Resources was up after they tell us they are again in takeover talks. Hasty was up on the management appointment of the ex-deputy uh, CEO of Leighton's. There are hopes he's going to turn the company around. Uh, and lastly, Woolworths was one of the few stocks down this week. Uh, they announced their CEO or their new CEO's salary package. He's going to get paid $1.9 million with the option to double it, uh, depending on performance. But before you get upset about that, if he can get the share price up 0.4%, he will cover his costs. Uh, winner of the week this week was Iron Ore Holdings, up 29% after selling some assets in the Pilbara. And loser of the week was Range Resources, down 18% on the back of an operational update.